What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Millaris. I want to break down day one of the NFL draft from last night. First pick overall was Bryce Young to the Carolina Panthers. Not much of a surprise there. The number two pick was the pick that I had in my mock draft 3.0. It was CJ Stroud going to the Houston Texans with a second overall pick. Although there's a lot of speculation during the day, even the last few days heading into the draft, that they could go with a defensive player there with a second overall pick. Could have been Will Anderson out of Alabama. The Texans surprised everyone. And with the third overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals trade down and the Texans trade up from 12 to the third pick to take Will Anderson out of Alabama. Quite a surprise seeing the Texans take the second and third overall picks. But I pointed out yesterday on my podcast that they had five picks in the top 75 picks in this year's draft. They had four picks in the first three rounds of next year's draft. So they have the draft capital to move back up and get themselves as a player. Now they're getting, in my eyes, the best defensive player in the draft. That was obviously a great move by them. I like the move that with going with Stroud with two and then three with Will Anderson. I think if you want to build for the future, you need to get your quarterback, so getting Stroud makes sense. And then also you get a premier pass rusher in Will Anderson that will definitely be an upgrade on their defense right away. Another surprise pick was Jalen Carter falling to the ninth overall selection, falling to the Philadelphia Eagles at nine. Sad to see as a Giants fan seeing Jalen Carter fall to the Eagles considering how good their defensive line is. But in reality, nothing the Giants could really do about it. Carter is a Philadelphia Eagle now and adds to an already explosive defensive line there in Philly. The Eagles also got a great pick with the 30th overall selection. They got Nolan Smith out of Georgia, so two picks in this year's first round by the Eagles, and both of them are Georgia Bulldogs. Kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with what they did last year. They took N'Kobe Dean out of Georgia, a linebacker in the draft, and they also took Jordan Davis, a defensive tackle in the first round. So now they have four Georgia Bulldogs from the last two drafts on their current team. Georgia, two straight years, have won the national championship, have been a powerhouse on defense, and all four of those guys were big contributors to their win in 2021, in the 2021 season, so the 2022 college football playoff. And then also, the guys that were drafting this year's draft, Carter and Nolan Smith, were big parts of the Georgia team that won in the 2022 season, so the 2023 college football playoff. Very exciting, though, for the Eagles. They just find ways to draft well, even though as a Giants fan, it's sad to say, they do draft well. They know what they're doing. Howie Roseman knows what he's doing there in Philly. And every single year, they continue to find talent in the draft. They've really only missed in a few picks in the last few years. J.J., I think a white side, that was a miss. Jalen Rago was a miss. But besides that, he's been doing well for himself there as the GM, and that's how he Roseman. Obviously builds a team that won the NFC Championship this past year and lost the Chiefs in a close game of the Super Bowl. So he's a building well, and obviously getting those two picks there, those are the two biggest steals of the draft, I'd say, at 9 and 30 overall. A surprise pick was the Atlanta Falcons taking B. John Robbins with the eighth overall selection. I think B. John Robinson is one of the best players in this year's draft. Top three talent in my eyes. I just don't know if running back was the best pick for them. I know they like going skill players. They went two years with Kyle Pitts with a fourth overall selection. Last year to Drake London, a wide receiver out of USC with a seventh or eighth overall pick. But now in this year's draft, they take B. John Robinson with the eighth overall selection. They like taking their skill players, which I understand you want to have offensive weapons. But I think if you look at it, that team wasn't really built right now to go get a running back. But at the end of the day, that's what, the, what they went with. And now they're building on Desmond Ritter and hoping he is the answer at quarterback, considering they could have taken a quarterback there at 80, even they could even trade it down. Could have went with a defensive lineman, an offensive lineman. There's a lot of things they could have done there, even though I think Bijan Robinson's a great player and could be the offensive rookie of the year. I think they want to build for the future. I think a better pick probably would have been defensive line, offensive line. But Bijan, great talent. Can't disrespect that. With the 12th overall selection, a surprise pick was the Detroit Lions taking Jameer Gibbs, a running back out of Alabama. Explosive player, a ton of speed. He's going to be right up there for Offensive Rookie of the Year along with B. John Robinson. But the problem with the Lions taking this pick is they already have two running backs in their running back room, DeAndre Swift, David Montgomery. Didn't really make much sense to me, but it seems like DeAndre Swift could potentially be on the move in the next few weeks. Another surprise pick to me was the Anthony Richardson pick by the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are rumored to like Will Levis all week long, even the last few weeks heading up into the draft. But that's not who they went with. They ended up selecting Anthony Richardson out of Florida to be their franchise quarterback. Levis actually ends up falling out of the first round. I wasn't that high on Levis. I've said it multiple times on my podcast and my radio show. I did not see the hype that everyone else saw. Didn't think he was that great. He ends up falling out of the first round. I do feel bad, though. He was there at the draft, and the cameras were just glued to him the entire night since he wasn't picked. Hopefully, he gets picked early today. So there's no more attention on it, but we will see what happens. I didn't see the hype in his film, so I can understand why he didn't go in the first round. But I had him going very early in a lot of my mock drafts since a lot of analysts and a lot of scouts that were talking 
to people that worked for like ESPN, stuff like that, they were saying he could be potentially taken by the Indianapolis Colts with the fourth overall pick. So it's a bit of a surprise he's not a first-round pick just based off of all of the reports, but that's just how the draft goes. You're never going to hear the right things from the media. So that was a pick that was a surprising pick to me with Richardson going fourth overall to the Colts. Dual threat quarterback. Definitely has to work on the accuracy, though. Another surprise pick to me was the pick by the Patriots getting Christian Gonzalez at 17. Somehow fell in the draft. He could have ended up being a top seven pick and no one would have said anything. But with him falling all the way to 17, becomes a great value pick there for the Patriots. They trade down from 14 to 17, pick up a fourth round pick in the process. The Steelers actually ended up trading up, getting a great tackle in Broderick Jones out of Georgia. Now they get their tackle for the future there, which is a great move for them, fixing their offensive line, helping out Kenny Pickett. A great pick that I drilled was Kalijah Kansi in my last mock draft. I had him going 19th overall to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a defensive tackle out of Pitt. I'm a big fan of Kansi. I think he's going to be a very good player, and he's going to be a strong force in that defensive line for years to come. Jackson Smith and Jigba somehow fell to 20, which there were no receivers drafted all the way until the 20th pick. There were no receivers drafted until number 20, where Jackson Smith and Jigba was the first receiver taken with a 20th overall selection. Then Quinton Johnston went 21st to the Chargers. Zay Flowers was picked up by the Baltimore Ravens with the 22nd pick. And Jordan Addison was drafted with the 23rd pick by the Vikings. So the Seahawks get JSN. The Chargers get Quinton Johnston. And the Vikings get Jordan Addison with the 23rd overall selection. Now they have their replacement for Adam Thielen. The Ravens add another receiver to help out Lamar Jackson. The Chargers add another receiver to their offense. Who knows what the future holds for Mike Williams? Who knows what the future holds for Keenan Allen there? They know they're still in a contract for another year. I think Keenan Allen has one more year left, and then Mike Williams has a few more. But we'll see what the future holds for those two guys. Quinton Johnston does, has a lot, does add a lot of size to that wide receiver room. There's already two big receivers at Keenan Allen's big, and then obviously Mike Williams is that big deep threat target similar to Quinton Johnston. I'd say Williams has better hands, but not a bad threat there to add to that wide receiver duo that was already great. Now Justin Herbert has another weapon to throw to. With the 24th overall pick, the New York Giants traded up from the 25th spot, moving up one spot, trading up with the Jacksonville Jaguars to take Deontay Banks, a cornerback out of Maryland. Feels a big need for the Giants. I know I was talking about it yesterday in my podcast that there's a chance that the Giants would avoid taking a defensive back here, whether it's Deontay Banks, Joey Porter Jr., Emmanuel Forbes. I thought they would lean more towards a safety if they're going to take a defensive back at all. I thought about it. I said, okay, they have Cordell Flott, Donna Holmes, both of those guys would either be the slot corner or the starting corner on the outside, opposite of Dory Jackson. So I said, okay, we might not need a cornerback in the first round. But then I thought about it. You look at the Giants' division. The Eagles have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. The Commanders have Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin. The Cowboys have C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks. The Giants had to go get a cornerback to defend in this division. And you get a lockdown cornerback in Deontay Banks. I know he gets beat a little bit vertically. He definitely has to work on that. There's definitely things he has to fix. But he's a good press cornerback. And in this giant system, you need good cornerbacks that can jam receivers at the line of scrimmage, get them off their routes. So it gives a pass rush more time to get to the quarterback. And that's the difference maker right there. The Giants blitz a lot. Now they actually have a good press cornerback. They can jam at the line of scrimmage and make it a little bit easier for the pass rush to get to the quarterback. If the quarterback looks downfield, doesn't see anybody open, it opens up more opportunities for the pass rush to get to the quarterback and get a sack. I think the Giants could transition to moving Donnay Holmes into a safety position. I think there's potential that they even could do that with Cordell Flott. I think Cordell Flott's going to be more of the starting slot corner this year. I'd imagine Deontay Banks starts as the CB2, opposite of Dory Jackson, who's the CB1. Donnay Holmes is the odd man out now. I know you can never have too many defensive backs, especially with Dory Jackson, who's been hurt a lot. But I think there's an opportunity here for Donnay Holmes in the secondary as a safety. That could be a hot take to some. I think there's a chance the Giants try to transition him into being a safety. We'll see what happens there. Another surprise pick to me that I want to talk about was Miles Murphy falling to the Bengals at 28. This is a guy that could have gone top 10, top 15. No one would have said anything. Falls 28th to the Bengals. I think he falls into a perfect situation. They need more pass rushing out. Trey Hendrickson's good. They do need another person alongside him. And they get another one here with Miles Murphy at 28. And that's also along with another pass rush they have in Sam Hubbard. So that's not a bad addition to that Bengals offense. They definitely need help on the pass rush. They definitely need help on the defensive line. And that's what they did just there with that pick by Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy was very good at Clemson and now goes to a team that's already good, adding another weapon on that defense. Good pick up there for the Bengals. And another pick I want to mention just before I close out, Brian Brzee falling to the 29th pick to the New Orleans Saints. 
Good pickup by the Saints. They need help on the defensive line. Brzee was a force his first year and a half at Clemson. Suffered an injury and just didn't get that same production back again. But he does show flashes. He's a big guy, obviously big frame. I think he's going to be good in the future for the Saints there on that defensive line. And then Nolan Smith falling to the 30th overall pick out of Georgia to the Eagles. One of the biggest steals in the draft. They are Cotter at nine, who could be arguably the best player in the draft talent-wise. I am falling in my mock drafts due to issues off the field. That definitely plays a role, though, in the draft of a guy to Cotter's pedigree. Talent-wise, on the field, very good player, but he fell to the ninth pick for a reason. I think the Cardinals pick of Caparis Johnson Jr. was a great pick of the sixth overall selection. You get an offensive tackle to protect Kyle Murray. Kyle Murray is still their franchise quarterback. You have to keep him healthy. He's coming off a torn ACL. Definitely needs more time to throw. Getting out of Paris Johnson Jr. is definitely a great pickup. Another guy that was a good pickup was Tyree Wilson to the Las Vegas Raiders. I the Raiders going cornerback for the most part in this draft and a lot of my mock drafts. I think it's a very good pickup. I think if you look at it, the Raiders pass rush hasn't been great. They did add Chandler Jones this past year. Didn't have as good of a year product, production-wise as he typically would. But you're getting another good pass rusher there in Tyree Wilson, who falls to the seventh overall pick. Easily could have been a top five pick. Once again, another guy you wouldn't have questioned if he went with the fifth overall pick to the Seahawks or even the second overall pick to the Texans when they were contemplating taking a defensive player with the second overall pick, whether it was Tyree Wilson or Will Anderson. We'll see what happens in the future, though. But I do like that pickup for the Raiders. Another surprise pick to me was Will McDonald, the fourth, going to the Jets at 15. I don't know too much about Will McDonald, the fourth. I know Mel Kuyper Jr. is a big fan of him. Then I saw his athleticism of him jumping over cars on Instagram or Twitter. And wow, that guy can jump out the gym. He's like Blake Griffin in his prime. I like that pickup by the Jets. They definitely need help on the pass rush, and they get another help there, adding in Will McDonald, the fourth, to a defensive line that has Quinnen Williams, who's already good. The Jets' defense is good. They saw Scott as well in the secondary. That's a good pickup there for the Jets. Emmanuel Forbes goes 16th overall to the Washington Commanders. Not a bad pickup for them as well. They definitely need help at the cornerback position. I thought they could have even potentially gone quarterback here with that pick, but I think cornerback is more of a need for them right now in their secondary. They'll roll with Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett as their quarterbacks this upcoming season. So for tonight's draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the clock with the 32nd overall pick. There's a lot of buzz. The team's on a trade up for this 32nd overall selection and take Will Levis. We'll see what teams do that. As of now, Hendon Hooker is still available as well. Surprised he's still available. I thought he'd be a first-round pick based on potential. I think he'd be the best quarterback in this draft. Could be a hot take to some. I just think Hendon Hooker is more my type of player. I think he's great to all threat, makes plays, plays hard. And without that injury, he could have been drafted even earlier. Could have been drafted even earlier. So he's a steal right now in the second round. I'd love to see him drafted early in the second round in today's draft, which starts tonight at 7 o'clock, rounds 2 and 3. Tomorrow, Saturday, will be rounds 4 through 7. So now some guys available in today's draft besides Will Levis and Hendon Hooker. I'm going to break down a few of them right now. Jalen Hyatt, still available from Tennessee. Wide receiver, he's very good. Jonathan Mingo, wide receiver, still available as well. Mingo played for Ole Miss in college. Good receiver, five touchdowns, 51 catches, and 861 receiving yards this past season. Also adding in a rushing touchdown as well. Good player. I'd like to see the Giants potentially grab him. He's 6'2", 215. A little bit on the biggest side for a receiver. I think the Giants need a little bit bigger receiver. 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Helps spread the field. Give Daniel Jones another red zone threat. I think, I think that would be a great pickup for the Giants. A lot of the receivers are very similar in size. Wanda Robinson's on the smaller side. Sterling Shepard's on the smaller size. Darius Sands about 6'1". He's a little bit bigger. Paris Campbell, similar size to Jamison Crowder. Then you have Colin Johnson and Isaiah Hodgins, who are on the biggest side. I think the Giants could use another bigger receiver, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", to help spread the field and give Daniel Jones another target. Another receiver still available is Tank Dell. His name is Nathaniel Dell, but his nickname is Tank. Nathaniel Dell of Houston. Good wide receiver. I think he could be drafted early in the draft in round two tonight. I think he'd be a good pickup for the Giants. He definitely could use some help at the receiver position. I don't think it was the biggest need, so I'm actually happy the Giants didn't go receiver. But if Jackson Smith and Jigba was still available for the Giants at 25, would have loved to take him with the 25th overall selection. Tank Dell this past year, 109 catches on 1,398 receiving yards and 17 touchdowns. Last year as a sophomore for Houston, 14 games played, 90 catches, 1,329 yards, and 12 touchdowns. So over the last few seasons, he's combined for 90 catches and 109 catches. So 199 catches over the last two seasons, adding in 29 touchdowns. Obviously a big play machine. The Giants could use him. He's on the smaller side, 5'10". So definitely the Giants could use a big receiver. We'll see what they choose to do here. But I would love to see Nathaniel Dell on the Giants. I think it helps spread the field. Even though he's on the smaller side, the big playmaking ability and the game-breaking speed the Giants could definitely use. 
He was so automatic for Houston. Would love to see him on the Giants' offense, even though he's undersized. I think he'd be a great addition to the offense, but I do think the Giants should lean towards a 6 2 6 3 receiver. But if Dylan were to be there and the Giants like him, and Joe Shane says at 57 they want him, I'm fine with that. Michael Mayer fell out of the first round. A lot of people had him falling to the Cowboys with the 26th overall pick. Even the Chargers were interested in him at the 21st overall pick. The Giants do not need a tight end, but he did fall to the second round. It would be great value for a team to pick up right now. Next up is Donnell Washington, a 6'7 tight end out of Georgia. He ended up falling out of the first round. Not many mocks had him going in the first round anyways, but a big tight end, 6'7", does definitely help spread the field. Didn't really get many opportunities, though, on the offensive side of the ball. He was a blocker, not really a great blocker, but didn't get many opportunities scoring-wise since Brock Bowers took all the shine on that Georgia offense. Next up is Osiris Torrance, a god out of Florida. Would love to see the Giants pick him up and definitely would fill a need at the god position. Dewan Jones is a tackle out of Ohio State. Could be a potential early guy that's drafted in this Second round tonight. As for defensive players, B.J. Ojolari, a linebacker at LSU. He's fallen into the second round. The Giants could potentially take him. The Giants could definitely use help at the edge and linebacker positions. So I'd expect them to take at least one, whether it's in rounds two, three, or four. They're going to take one at some point. And even in round four, there could be potentially still a starter on the Giants. So we'll see what the Giants do there. Some other guys to point out, cornerback Joey Porter Jr. somehow fell out of the first round. I think he's going to be a very good cornerback out of Penn State. Would have loved the Giants to have taken him. But I do think Deontay Banks fits the Giants' system better for Wink Martindale. So I'm happy with the pick. I think he's a very good pick. I think Giants fans right now might be upset about trading up. You want to make sure you jump ahead of the Cowboys since they potentially could even have taken him. Who knows? The Giants did worry about that a little bit. So you trade up. Make sure you get your guy. You lost four receivers in a row there between the Seahawks, Chargers, Ravens, and Vikings. So you're no longer on receiver. Make sure you get your guy. And if that was the guy that the Giants wanted, Deontay Banks. I'm fine with trading up there and picking him up with the 24th overall selection. Another player to point out is Trenton Simpson, a linebacker out of Clemson. The Giants could definitely use him as well. Wouldn't mind him being the 57th overall selection. Going to be a very good tackler for a defense in the NFL. and would be a steal if the Giants get him at 57. DJ Turner, the second, a cornerback out of Michigan. Had a very productive season for the Wolverines in the secondary Definitely could be picked early in today's draft. Another guy to point out is Brian Branch, a safety out of Alabama. Would love, 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 love for the Giants to get him with the 57th overall selection. Do not think there's a chance he's there at 57. Would not mind if the Giants traded up to, let's say, 40 if he somehow fell there and picked him up there. The Giants still have seven picks left in the draft, I believe, so why not trade up and try to get him? Very talented player would fill the role that Julian Love left the Giants with very well. Very good tackler, plays very hard, great hitter, probably the hardest hitting safety in this draft. The Giants definitely could use help in their secondary considering how good the division is wide receiver-wise, which I already broke down every receiver in the division. The Giants could use help in their secondary even more. I would love to see Brian Branch at the safety position for the Giants next year. Joe Tipman, a center out of Wisconsin, probably the best center in the draft. Would love to see the Giants potentially grab him with the 57th overall selection. Or trade up and grab him. I think he'd be a great fit for the Giants in their offense. They do still need a center right now with John Feliciano leaving free agency. As of now, I think Ben Bredesen would be the starting center. So the Giants could definitely use an upgrade at the center position. I think Joe Tippmann would fill that role very well. Another guy still available is a cornerback out of South Carolina, Kim Smith. He's fallen out of the first round. I had him, I believe, going 25th in my first mock draft to the Jacksonville Jaguars. It was 24th to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He fell out of the first round. Would be a good value pick right now. Another player to look out for, and this could be a potential Giants draft pick, Marvin Mims, a wide receiver at Oklahoma that they're a big fan of. People compare him to Santonio Holmes. He's five foot eleven, just about 183 pounds, and made some plays this past year for Oklahoma. 1083 receiving yards, adding in six touchdowns for a total of 20 touchdowns across his three-year college career. Nine as a freshman, five as a sophomore in 2021, and then six as a junior in 2022. Could definitely be the Giants draft pick at 57 if they want to go receiver. I think the Giants definitely could use offensive line a little more. Osiris Torrance would be a great pick. Joe Tipman would be a great pick. You feel a need at center and guard if you get either one of those guys. I think even Brian Branch, if you trade up and get him, it feels a need at safety. B.J. Ojolari. Out of LSU, the brother of Aziz Ojolari. You could pair him together with his brother on the Giants' defense. Could grab him. Trenton Simpson out of Clemson to fill a need at linebacker. I mean, the Giants have a lot of holes they could fix in this year's draft. And that's why I think wide receiver is less of a need than most people would expect. I know a lot of people do want the Giants to take a receiver. I don't think it's as big of a need as most people think. I think wide receiver is a need in the Giants. I'm not saying it's not a need at all. 
But I do think they have more needs. And if you're not going to get a big 6364 receiver, which I think is necessary, I'd like Tank Dell if we're going to go receiver, though, if we're going to go with a small receiver. But if we're going to go with a big receiver, I think A.T. Perry out of Wake Forest would fit the Giants' offense very well. Definitely helps spread the field. He's six foot five, kind of built like DK Metcalf. This past year had 1,096 receiving yards off 81 receptions and 11 touchdowns. That was as a senior for Wake Forest. In his third year in college football in 2021, 71 catches for 1,293 yards and 15 touchdowns. So 26 touchdowns over the last two seasons to go along with two 1,000-yard receiving seasons in a row with over 70 catches in both of the last two years. Very impressive. I think he'd definitely help the Giants' offense. Would not mind him being the Giants' selection with the 57th overall pick. We could potentially trade up. There's definitely talks in that. I think the Patriots did very well for themselves getting Christian Gonzalez yesterday. Very good cornerback. You feel a need in the Patriots' defense. The Patriots need help at the cornerback position. You look at that Patriots division, you're playing against a lot of great quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Tua Tagovailoa, Aaron Rodgers, and a lot of good receivers like Jalen Waddell, like Tyreek Hill, like Garrett Wilson, like Stephon Diggs, like Gabe Davis. You need a cornerback, especially in the AFC overall in general. You're playing against... Jamar Chase and T. Higgins whenever you have to play the Bengals. So cornerback is definitely a need for the Patriots, and I think it was a great selection taking Christian Gonzalez with the 17th overall pick in yesterday's draft. So there you go. That's my big board left on the day. We'd love to see Joe Tipman be a New York Giant. We'd love to see Brian Branch be a New York Giant. We'd love to see the Giants maybe even go with a guard in Osiris Torrance. We'll see what the Giants do. I know they're not always the most attractive picks taking a guard or taking a center, but it's definitely a need in the game of football, and the Giants definitely need help on their offensive line, so it definitely would fill a hole there for them. And I'd definitely be excited to see Osiris Torrance on the Giants. They need help at guard. They definitely need help at center, so going with an offensive lineman would not be the worst thing, especially considering Daniel Jones still got hit around a ton last year. He got rid of the ball quicker and definitely cut down the turnovers, but the Giants definitely still need to protect him, so would not mind the Giants taking a guard or a center in the second round. Could definitely go linebacker as well. Could even go receiver, but I don't think receiver is as big of a need. We we'll love Nathaniel Dow to be a giant. We we'll love A.T. Perry to be a giant, but I think the Giants have a lot more needs, and you have to protect Daniel Jones. It doesn't matter who you have at receiver if you can't get them the ball with Daniel Jones getting hit every single play like he did over the last few years, even though this past year he got rid of the ball quicker, as I said. Definitely still got hit a ton. You need to protect him. So we'll see what happens in the NFL draft tonight. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the second and third round of the NFL Draft tonight. Both of those taking place tonight on Channel 15 ESPN at 7 p.m. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.